Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Brompton Front Dynamo Hub. It is an accessory that I've been asked quite frequently about. A lot of people wanna know my opinion about it. A lot of people wanna know if I'm actually running one or whether I'm planning on getting one. The short answer is no, I'm not planning on getting one. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why. Let's first talk about what a Dynamo Wheel Hub actually is. And then we're gonna talk about the two reasons why any cyclist would want one. So if you guys don't know what a wheel hub on a bicycle is, this is a wheel and this is the hub of the wheel. And basically a Dynamo Hub is built bigger and is built where the inside of the wheel hub itself is a little generator, a little electric generator basically, put in simple terms. Basically, it uses copper coil, some magnets, and it uses the spinning motion of the wheel when you're riding down the road to use those magnets and the copper coil to generate electricity through electromagnetic induction. Now, if you don't know what any of that means, don't worry. Basically, the hub produces electricity to power your devices. Okay, let's talk about why any cyclist would want a front dynamo wheel hub. There are two reasons for two different types of cyclists, really. Commuting cyclists like dynamo front wheel hubs because it will power their lights. It'll power their front headlamp and the rear tail lamp. Touring and bikepacking cyclists like front dynamo wheel hubs so that it can supply power to charge their devices when they're on long trips and they're not going to be around any kind of services or any kind of power source to charge up their batteries or charge up their devices. So they use front dynamo wheel hubs to generate the power that they need to keep their devices charged up while they're driving down the road. Now, before I go any further, I just want to make it very clear. With any accessory, it's all about personal preference. Okay, there are a lot of you out there that may have the Brompton Front Dynamo Hub and love it, think it's the greatest thing in the world. That's fine. You gotta decide what you like. You gotta decide the accessories that fit your needs. I don't like the Front Dynamo Hub for several reasons, which I'll explain later in this video. But doesn't mean that it's a bad device. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work well, and I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from buying one. I'm just telling you the reasons why I don't want one, and the reason why I don't like Dynamo Hubs in general. Okay, let's first talk about the commuting cyclist. No commuting cyclist I have ever known in my life uses a front Dynamo Hub to keep their electrical devices charged up. Basically, when you're commuting back and forth to work, you can keep your devices charged up at your home or at your work. If you want to charge your battery packs, you would charge those at home. Or if you didn't charge it at home, you would charge it at work. If you wanted to charge your phone, you would charge that at home or you would charge it at work. Why on earth would you ever charge it using your Dynamo Hub? It just doesn't make any sense. There are some downsides to charging devices on a Dynamo Hub that I'll talk later on in the video about. For me, I commute 10 miles to work and 10 miles back. That isn't even enough time to give this maybe one or two percent charge. So there's no point in it. So no commuting cyclist is going to even bother trying to charge their electrical devices on a front dynamo hub. What a commuting cyclist will use a dynamo hub for is to power their headlamp and their rear tail lamp. Now, there are two reasons why I don't like front dynamo hubs and I've owned several of them in the past on some of my bikes. And the reason why is I don't think that the dynamo powered headlamps and tail lamps are as good as battery powered ones. I noticed that there is a, quite a bit of a difference in the intensity of the light. So that's number one reason. Number two reason is there is a noticeable drag that the hub produces when I'm rolling down the road. Even when the thing is turned off, it still produces a, you know, I would say at least a watt or two of drag. And when it's turned on, I notice at least a six to 10 watt drag. When I had a power meter, I was able to measure that. And I was like, man, there is a noticeable difference in the drag that a front dynamo hub produces. And I didn't like that at all. Okay, so we got those two reasons, right? The two reasons that I just mentioned. I don't believe the lights are nowhere near as good and I don't like the drag on my front wheel. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the lights really quickly, okay? I know there are some people out there that are gonna disagree with me and say that their dynamo light is just as good as my battery powered. In my experience, 
I have not seen that. Now, to be fair, I have not owned a Dynamo Light and I have not owned a Dynamo Hub for about a year and a half. I do concede that there could have been some technological advancements in that last year and a half that I have not owned a Dynamo Hub or a Dynamo Powered Light. I seriously doubt it, but I do concede that that is a possibility. So if there's something that's come out since I've owned a Dynamo headlamp that's much better, I don't know about it. But I have owned three or four Dynamo headlamps in my day, and all of them were top of the line, and none of them were as good as these battery powered. That's just my experience. Take that with a grain of salt. So what about the other type of cyclists that I talked about earlier? What about bike packers? What about touring cyclists? A lot of you are probably saying, Brian, don't you want to tour on your Brompton? Wouldn't a Dynamo Hub be ideal in that situation? And my answer to you is no, no it wouldn't. Let's go back to the drag, okay? Now look, a commuting cyclist might not notice the drag on his front wheel with a Dynamo Hub if he's not going very far. Where, a dra where drag is going to come in on a Dynamo Hub is when you're going faster, like if you're really, really pushing it, when you're pushing 20 miles an hour, you're going to notice that drag on your front wheel with a Dynamo Hub more than you're going to notice it at 10 miles an hour. So if you're not really traveling that fast, you're probably not going to notice it as much. If you're not commuting long distances, you're probably not going to notice it that much. But if you're commuting long distances or those times when I want to go out on an 88, 90, 100 mile bike ride, that drag is going to add up over a period of time. That 8 to 10 watt drag over a course of a long ride is going to add up. It's going to take its toll and you're going to notice it a lot more. And therein lies the problem with touring. You're going to notice it. Now, a lot of bike packers and a lot of touring cyclists don't care about the drag because they've already got their bikes loaded down really heavy and they figure what the heck is another 8 to 10 watt loss going to matter. And I do understand that perspective, okay? But the way I look at it is I'm saying that an 8 to 10 watt loss over a period of 100 miles is going to add up. And then if you take into consideration that, okay, the whole day I might have been riding against a massive headwind, and then you take all the weight I have on the bicycle, when you add all those three things together, that's a hell of a loss, okay? If I only have to deal with two of those things, if I only have to deal with the massive headwind and the heaviness of my bike and not have to deal with the drag of the wheel, I'd much rather deal with just the two instead of the three. That's personally me. Some people, they might not care. So commuting cyclists that don't travel very far and are not going as fast might not notice the drag on the front wheel. And in that case, a front dynamo hub powering their lights, if they don't care about the lights not being as bright, that might work out perfect for them and that's fine. For me, I want really, really, really bright lights and I don't want much drag on my front wheel. Plus I wanna be able to take my bike on long rides and long tours and I'd rather, much rather not have that drag on the front wheel. A lot of people will put up with the drag to be able to charge their devices. Now we're gonna talk about the charging capabilities of Dynamo hubs because in all honesty, I really, really, really have some negative experiences, but they're all anecdotal experiences, okay? So take it with a grain of salt. I just haven't had good experiences with Dynamo hubs and I've owned two, I've owned three or four at least. I know at least three. I've owned three Dynamo hubs at least. And I think one of my other bikes had one. So I think I own four, but I know for sure I've had three two of which I bought specifically and had installed on my bike, and one came with the bike. But when I first got a Dynamo Hub, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world, man. I was gonna get my phone, I was gonna charge it, it was gonna be really awesome, and I went on quite a lot of bike tours that summer. And I remember plugging in my phone for days and days and days and days on end. The only thing I didn't like about it at the time was the fact that it just didn't seem to charge. I remember being on a 12 hour bike ride or at least it was close to 12 hours. And I remember unplugging my phone thinking I was gonna have it. I thought it was gonna be fully charged. And I looked at it and it only said 43%. I was like, are you kidding me? That's all that charged in all that time? So to me, it just didn't seem to do very well. Now I know what you're thinking. Maybe you didn't have a good hub, Brian. Maybe you had a piece of crap. No, at the time I bought the best stuff there was. You know, I bought really high quality, the top of the line stuff at that time. I just didn't think they did very well personally. I didn't think it was worth the drag. I didn't think it was worth the extra weight of the wheel. 
anytime a wheel had to be set. I mean, there was a lot of other technicalities that went into it, and I just didn't like it. I didn't. And that was after using it for a solid year. I just didn't think they were that great. Now look, I've had an iPhone ever since they came out, the first iPhone, okay? I usually got a two-year contract. At the time, it was singular, then it switched back over to AT&T. I got the first iPhone, I skipped, I didn't get the 3G, but I did get the 3GS. And then of course, when my two-year contract was up, I got another one, and I kept doing that in succession. Every single iPhone that I've ever had has lasted well past the contract date. The only one that didn't was my iPhone 4S. That was the iPhone I was using all the time when I was on bike tours. I remember that whole summer plugging in my iPhone all the time with that with that Dynamo Hub system that I had. And I remember, you know, being on a long tour, having that thing plugged in all day long. So after the summer was over, around September or October, I remember my phone battery wasn't even holding a charge for more than an hour. I mean, I'd have it an hour and it would be already down 50%. An hour and a half, it would be almost down to 20%. And I remember that the battery wasn't doing very well. So I was like, what's going on here? And I ended up taking it to the Apple store and they told me that, that your battery's shot, you need a new battery. Now, maybe, it was just a defective battery in an iPhone. It's very possible that could have happened. So I ended up getting the battery replaced and it wasn't a big deal. It was under warranty, no big deal, right? But then I heard somebody else say something similar, like they ran a Dynamo Hub. And I remember telling these people when we were swapping stories back and forth and they said, oh, I don't like Dynamo Hubs, it damaged my phone. So when they said that, it, something clicked in my head and I realized, hey, you know, I remember my iPhone 4S battery didn't last nowhere near as long as all my other iPhones did. And I started putting two and two together. Well, maybe it was the Dynamo Hub that caused it. Now, this is purely speculative. I understand that, okay? But I've, I've been told by more than two people, at least. I know one group, one couple, they don't run Dynamo Hubs for the same reason I don't run them. And then there was another person that said the same thing. So I've had more than two people, plus my own personal experience, I don't like running my devices off of the Dynamo Hub. There are other bike packers and touring cyclists that believe the same thing. They don't ever plug their iPhone into their Dynamo Hub. What they'll do is they'll use a battery bank and they'll charge up the battery bank and then use the battery bank to charge up their phone. This way they keep their sensitive electronic devices safe. And if it ends up damaging their uh, battery pack, it's not a big deal. They throw this away and get another one and they're back on the road again. So all this is my purely anecdotal experience I'm no electrochemist. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. There's probably lots of people out there that use Dynamo Hubs and never had this issue. But for me personally, I've just had bad experiences with them. I know people that have had bad experiences with them and I would just rather err on the side of caution. The way I think about it is if Group A said, don't charge your devices with a Dynamo Hub, it damages your devices. And Group B says, no, it doesn't. I'm always going to side with Group A because I want to be on the safe side. Because if they're wrong, you've lost nothing. If these guys are wrong over here in Group B, then you've lost whatever electronic device you damaged. So personally to me, I just always default down to if I'm not sure or if there's any evidence that it does damage my electric devices, I'd rather just be on the safe side and not use a Dynamo Hub. But that's just my thoughts on it. I don't like them. I know they don't damage the lights because those lights are made to actually work with a Dynamo Hub, but in all honesty, I don't use those kinds of lights because what I mentioned earlier, I don't think they're bright enough, so I use battery powered lights anyway. And personally, I'd rather use battery banks on long tours anyway. I'd rather, these are light, man. I'd rather carry three of these around. Three of these would last me and my devices probably for a week, a week and a half, you know? And I'm a heavy electric consumer, so <laughs> if, if three of these would last me a week solid, I'd much rather carry these than trying to charge my uh, devices on a, uh, on a Dynamo Hub, but that's just me personally. Again, I am saying that I don't know whether there is any correlation between Dynamo Hubs and damaging your cell phone batteries. Personally, my belief is it can't be good on the batteries. You know, for me, I'm thinking you're not charging at a consistent rate like a wall outlet charger. You're constantly always speeding up, slowing down, stopping, starting. To me, it, to me, it just seems like that wouldn't be good on a battery, but I don't know for sure. I'm no electrochemist, but those are the reasons why I will not get a Dynamo Hub for my Brompton or any of my other bikes for that matter. 
like I said, those are just my personal experiences. Take that with a grain of salt. Okay, guys. So with all that being said, if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment and question section. I'll answer them as best as I possibly can. If you have any experiences with any particular Dynamo Hub, leave that down in the comment section too. I'd be glad to read that. But guys, if you like the video, if you got anything out of the video, even if it was the most infinitesimally small little piece of information that you got answered for you, consider subscribing to the channel. I really, really would appreciate it. It does mean a lot to me. So comments, likes, subscriptions, definitely appreciate it, guys. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.